Space, vast, mysterious, and beautiful. For many, it's a symbol of exploration and the potential of the human spirit. But there are corners of the universe that, if you were to visit, you might wish you never did. These locations are enough to give anyone a strong dose of astrophobia, a fear of space. Let's dive into some of these awe-inspiringly terrifying regions of space. The Buddha's void, often referred to as the Great Nothing, is one of the largest known voids in the universe. A void, in cosmic terms, is a region of space that has a significantly lower density of galaxies than the surrounding areas. The Buddha's void stands out particularly because of its mind-boggling emptiness. This vast expanse spans approximately 330 million light-years across, and while space is generally thought of as being relatively empty, the size and extent of this void are far beyond the norm. To give a perspective on its enormity, our entire Milky Way galaxy is only about 100,000 light-years in diameter. If you were to travel across the Buddha's void at the speed of light, it would take you 330 million years to cross from one side to the other. But what makes the Buddha's void even more mystifying is its stark emptiness. While you might expect thousands of galaxies to be present within such a vast space, researchers have found only about 60. That's shockingly sparse. The discovery of the Buddha's void has challenged our understanding of the universe's large-scale structure. Why? Because it doesn't easily fit into the cosmic web theory, where galaxies are connected by filaments and nodes of dark matter, creating a web-like structure. So how did such a vast void form? There are several theories. One idea is that smaller voids merged over time, resulting in this supersized void. Another theory posits that this region of space experienced a much lower rate of galaxy formation due to variations in the density of matter after the Big Bang. Regardless of the cause, floating within the boot's void would feel like an endless journey through an almost infinite abyss of nothingness. Hot Jupiters are among the most intriguing and unexpected discoveries in the field of exoplanet research. These gas giants bear a resemblance to our own Jupiter in terms of mass and composition, but with one key difference their blisteringly close proximity to their host stars. Imagine a planet several times the mass of Jupiter, but instead of taking 12 Earth years to complete an orbit around its star, it does so in just a few days. The close orbit of these gas giants means they're exposed to intense heat from their stars, leading them to have daytime temperatures that can soar up to 2,000 degrees Celsius. This is hotter than some stars. This close relationship with their host star also means that hot Jupiters are tidally locked. One side perpetually faces the star, basking in its intense heat, while the other side remains in eternal darkness. This creates a dramatic temperature difference between the two sides. Powerful winds, faster than any on Earth, whip around these planets, transferring heat from the day side to the night side. These winds create storms of unimaginable ferocity, with metallic clouds and rains of molten glass. The existence of hot Jupiters was a surprise to astronomers when first discovered. Traditionally, it was believed that massive gas giants could only form far from their stars, where cold temperatures allowed icy materials to clump together. How did hot Jupiters end up so close to their stars? One leading theory is that they formed farther out and migrated inward over time due to gravitational interactions. Exploring a hot Jupiter would be a lesson in extremes, from its scorching temperatures to its roaring winds and searing storms. A visit to such a planet would expose you to a world where the rules of earthly understanding are dramatically challenged. Magnetars are some of the universe's most extreme objects. Essentially, they're a type of neutron star, remnants left after massive stars explode in spectacular supernova. While all neutron stars are incredibly dense and possess strong magnetic fields, magnetars crank up the intensity to levels almost difficult to fathom. A teaspoon of material from a magnetar would weigh about a billion tons on Earth. Picture the entire human population condensed into a sugar cube, and you're starting to get a grasp of the staggering density of these objects. But what truly sets magnetars apart from other neutron stars is their magnetic field. These fields are up to a thousand times stronger than typical neutron stars. To understand this kind of magnetic might, consider this. If a magnetar were located about halfway to the moon, it could strip the information from all the credit cards on Earth. Magnetars are also dynamic and occasionally unpredictable. They can produce what's known as starquakes, 
due to the tension between their immense gravity and their magnetic fields. These starquakes can release gamma ray flares, which are millions of times more energetic than the most powerful solar flares from our sun. Thankfully, no magnetar is close enough to us to pose a threat. However, a gamma ray burst directed at Earth from even thousands of light years away could cause significant harm to our atmosphere and possibly even lead to mass extinctions. Black holes, regions of space where gravity is so strong that nothing can escape, not even light, are enigmatic enough on their own. But sometimes, in the vast cosmic dance of the universe, two black holes find themselves in a close gravitational embrace, leading to the awe-inspiring phenomena of binary black holes. In this cosmic tango, two black holes orbit each other, drawn together by their immense gravitational pull. As they spiral closer and closer, they begin to affect the very fabric of space-time itself. This effect is so intense that it sends ripples across the universe, much like how twirling a finger in water would create ripples across the surface. These ripples, known as gravitational waves, were first theorized by Albert Einstein over a century ago and were finally detected in 2015, marking a groundbreaking moment in our understanding of the universe. The eventual merger of these binary black holes is an event of unimaginable power. When they finally collide and become one, the resulting black hole has slightly less mass than the sum of the two original black holes. The missing mass is converted into energy and radiated out as gravitational waves. In some cases, this energy output can be equivalent to the combined light of all the stars in our galaxy. Observing these mergers offers a rare peek into the dynamic and violent relationships that play out in the universe's dark corners. The dance of binary black holes is a testament to the unimaginable forces and phenomena that shape our cosmos. Rogue planets are the true wanderers of our universe, detached and free, traversing the vast cosmic expanses without the gravitational tether of a star. But what makes these celestial bodies so fascinating is the story of their origin and the mysteries they hold. A typical image of a planetary system involves planets gracefully orbiting a star, bound in a celestial dance that spans billions of years. But sometimes this dance can get a bit chaotic. Gravitational interactions, especially in young and turbulent solar systems, can give a planet enough of a nudge to eject it from its home system. This ejection sets the planet on a lone journey through the interstellar void. Size-wise, rogue planets can range from being as massive as Jupiter the largest planet in our solar system, to being as small as Earth or even smaller. And while they lack the warmth of a star, they aren't necessarily devoid of energy or activity. Some rogue planets might still radiate heat from their formation. This residual warmth, combined with potential internal heat-generating processes, means these planets could harbor subsurface oceans. There's also a possibility that life, at least in some primitive form, might exist on these worlds. If a planet was ejected from its system with a thick atmosphere and enough internal heat, it could provide the necessary conditions for life to persist. Rogue planets, given their solitary nature, are difficult to detect. They don't emit their own light, and without a nearby star, they don't reflect light either. However, astronomers have employed ingenious methods, like gravitational microlensing, where the gravity of the rogue planet acts like a lens amplifying the light of distant stars. Galaxies are colossal collections of stars, gas, dust, and dark matter. They're the fundamental building blocks of the universe's large-scale structure. But galaxies aren't static. They're dynamic entities, constantly in motion. And occasionally, their paths cross in a dramatic event known as a galactic collision. Picture this. Two galaxies, each comprising billions of stars, drawing closer and closer due to their mutual gravitational attraction. As they approach, their shapes start to deform, creating long tidal tails of stars and gas stretched out by the immense gravitational forces at play. Over millions of years, these galaxies can merge into a single, larger entity, often resulting in a new galaxy with a unique shape and character. But here's a fascinating fact. Despite the sheer number of stars in these galaxies, the likelihood of two stars directly colliding during a galaxy merger is minuscule. This is because, relative to their sizes, stars are very far apart from each other. Instead of direct stellar collisions, the real action happens in the interstellar medium, the gas and dust between stars. 
As galaxies collide, these gases can compress, leading to a burst of new star formation, lighting up the merging galaxies like cosmic fireworks. Our own Milky Way is no stranger to this process. In its history, it's believed to have consumed several smaller galaxies. And as mentioned earlier, in the far future, we're set to collide with the Andromeda Galaxy. While this may sound alarming, remember that this event is billions of years away. And when it does happen, it will be a gradual process unfolding over millions of years, not a sudden catastrophe. The resulting merged galaxy, sometimes whimsically referred to as Milkamida, will be a new chapter in the ongoing saga of cosmic evolution. In the tapestry of the universe, there are threads that we can see and touch, like stars, planets, and galaxies. And then there are threads that remain invisible and intangible, yet they weave the cosmos together in ways we're just beginning to understand. One such thread is dark matter. Dark matter is aptly named, primarily because it doesn't emit, absorb, or reflect light. Unlike the stars that twinkle in the night or the planets that reflect sunlight, dark matter remains invisible. So how do we even know it exists if we can't see it? The answer lies in its gravitational influence on the things we can observe. When astronomers look at galaxies, they've noticed something intriguing. The stars at the edges of galaxies move faster than they should, if only the gravity of the galaxy's visible matter were at play. This suggests there's something else, something unseen, exerting its gravitational pull. Through such observations and calculations, scientists deduced the presence of dark matter. In fact, it's believed that around 85% of the matter in the universe is dark matter. But here's the twist. Despite decades of searching and countless experiments, we've yet to directly detect a dark matter particle. Various theories suggest what it might be made of. One leading candidate is the weakly interacting massive particle. These hypothetical particles are believed to interact through weak force, one of the four fundamental forces of nature, but not with electromagnetic force, which means they wouldn't emit or absorb light. The quest to understand dark matter isn't just academic curiosity, it's crucial to our comprehension of the universe. This mysterious substance plays a pivotal role in galaxy formation, cosmic structure, and the overall fate of the cosmos. When it comes to the scale of celestial objects, planets in our own solar system provide a sense of familiarity. Jupiter, our neighborhood's heavyweight champion, feels large. But venture beyond our solar system and you'll find planets that make Jupiter look modest. Enter the world of Super Jupiters. These are exoplanets, planets located outside our solar system that boast masses exceeding that of Jupiter. Some of them, like HD 100546b, hold up to 13 times Jupiter's mass. The sheer size and volume of these planets are difficult to comprehend. With vast atmospheres primarily composed of hydrogen and helium, their swirling cloud bands and tumultuous weather systems might span wider than entire continents here on Earth. Yet size isn't the only fascinating aspect of these colossal worlds. A subset of these super-Jupiters known as rogue planets defies conventional understanding of how planets should behave. They do not orbit any star. Instead, these rogue planets wander the vastness of space alone without a sun to illuminate their skies. Imagine a planet, massive beyond comprehension, drifting in the inky blackness of space devoid of sunlight. Their existence challenges our traditional notions of planet formation and asks more questions about the diverse ways celestial bodies can come into existence. Moreover, the gravity on these super-Jupiters would be intense, many times stronger than what we experience on Earth. This immense gravitational pull can lead to intriguing and bizarre phenomena. For instance, these planets might have layers of metallic hydrogen deep within their interiors. Hydrogen compressed under such extreme pressures that it behaves like a metal. In the hunt for extraterrestrial life, these supermassive planets also present new possibilities. While their gas-dominated nature might make them inhospitable for life as we know it, their potential moons, subjected to the planet's strong gravitational forces, could harbor subsurface oceans kept warm by tidal forces. Such environments could potentially be cradles for life, presenting a scenario where the most massive planets, even in their hostility, could indirectly nurture pockets of life. All in all, super-Jupiters embody the wonder and diversity of our universe, challenging our understanding and stretching the limits of what we once thought possible in planetary formation and behavior.
In the vast cosmic theater, stars take center stage, illuminating the universe with their brilliance. But among these luminous bodies, a particular group stands out, not just for their light, but their sheer size, the supermassive stars. While our sun is often considered a standard reference for stellar sizes, it pales in comparison to the behemoths known as supermassive or hypergiant stars. These are not just larger, they are incomprehensibly vast. Stars like Ey Scuti, one of the largest known, extend for more than 1,700 times the sun's radius. If placed in the center of our solar system, it would engulf the orbits of planets up to and beyond Jupiter. The lives of these hypergiants are turbulent and short-lived, at least in astronomical terms. Born from massive clouds of gas and dust, these stars burn bright but burn out quickly. Their enormous sizes mean they have an abundance of fuel, but they consume it voraciously. Within a few million years, a mere blink in cosmic time. These stars exhaust their fuel and meet dramatic ends. And it's not just their size that's impressive. The internal processes of these stars are equally fascinating. Due to their vast masses, the pressures and temperatures in their cores reach levels unimaginable in smaller stars. These extreme conditions facilitate the fusion of heavier elements, turning hydrogen into helium and progressing through the periodic table, creating elements like oxygen, carbon and even metals like iron. Yet this grandeur comes at a price. The more massive the star, the more unstable its life. Many supermassive stars undergo periods of intense pulsations, causing them to eject vast amounts of material into space. This constant tumult makes their surfaces boil and roil with massive convective cells, each one many times larger than our entire sun. Their demise is as spectacular as their lives. Once the fuel in their cores is expended, they can't support their immense gravitational pull, leading to a spectacular supernova explosion. These explosions scatter the heavier elements formed within the star out into space, seeding the universe with the building blocks for new stars, planets, and even life. In the end, the legacy of supermassive stars is twofold. They illuminate the cosmos with their unparalleled brilliance, and in their death throes they give back, ensuring the cycle of stellar birth and rebirth continues. In their enormity and intensity, they embody the dynamic, ever-evolving nature of the universe. Imagine a region in space where gravity pulls so much that even light can't escape its grasp. That's the essence of a black hole. But beyond the standard black holes, there are entities so massive and awe-inspiring that they defy comprehension. The supermassive black holes. These cosmic giants are often found at the centers of galaxies, including our own Milky Way. Unlike stellar black holes, which form from the remnants of massive stars, supermassive black holes contain millions to billions of times the mass of our Sun. Their origins are still a subject of debate among astronomers. Some theorize they form from the accretion of masses over eons, while others suggest they might originate from the collapse of immense gas clouds early in the universe's history. The gravitational influence of supermassive black holes is so powerful that they can dictate the dynamics of their host galaxies. Around them swirl accretion disks, vast rings of gas, dust, and other cosmic debris pulled in by the black hole's immense gravitational force. As this material spirals closer to the event horizon, the point of no return, it heats up and emits intense radiation, often observable as quasars, some of the brightest objects in the universe. This intense gravitational pull also influences the paths of stars orbiting near them. Observations of stars at the center of our Milky Way have provided indirect evidence of the presence of a supermassive black hole named Sagittarius A asterisk. These stars whip around at such high velocities that only the presence of a massive, dense object like a supermassive black hole could cause such behavior. Yet for all their might and influence, supermassive black holes remain enigmatic. Their event horizons are shrouded in mystery beyond which our current understanding of physics breaks down. Within this boundary, all known laws of nature become unpredictable. It's a realm where our current understanding of space and time no longer applies, a true frontier of human knowledge. One of the most groundbreaking discoveries related to these entities was the capturing of the first ever image of a black hole silhouette by the Event Horizon Telescope in 2019. This image, a glowing ring surrounding a dark central region, was a visualization of the supermassive black hole at the heart of the galaxy M87, 
located 55 million light years from Earth. The study of supermassive black holes is more than just a quest to understand these mysterious entities. It's a journey to the very edges of our understanding, a probe into the extremes of the universe, and a testament to the insatiable human curiosity about the cosmos. Deep within the vast expanse of the universe lie remnants and echoes of its very beginnings. These ancient signals offer tantalizing glimpses into the earliest moments after the Big Bang, allowing us to piece together the cosmic puzzle of our universe's infancy. When we talk about the universe's ancient echoes, the cosmic microwave background, CMB, radiation stands out prominently. Detected for the first time in 1965, the CMB is a faint glow that fills every corner of the cosmos. Imagine it as the afterglow of the universe's explosive birth, a snapshot of what the universe looked like when it was only 380,000 years old. At this time, the universe was a hot soup of particles, and as it expanded, it cooled down, allowing protons and electrons to combine and form neutral hydrogen atoms. The photons that had been scattered by these free particles could now travel freely through the universe. These very photons are what we detect as the CMB today. The CMB provides a treasure trove of information, tiny fluctuations or ripples in this radiation, which represent minute differences in temperatures, offer insights into the initial conditions of the universe and the seeds for the formation of galaxies and large-scale structures. These temperature variations are like footprints, indicating regions of varying densities in the early universe. Delving deeper into the ancient cosmos, we find relics like Population the Three Stars. While no direct observation of these first-generation stars has been made, they are believed to have formed a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. Composed almost entirely of hydrogen and helium, these behemoths were much larger and hotter than stars today, living fast and dying young in spectacular supernovae explosions. The debris from these explosions went on to seed subsequent generations of stars with heavier elements, setting the stage for the complex cosmic dance that led to galaxies, planets and eventually life. In our quest to understand the universe's origins, we also study the distribution of galaxies, clusters and cosmic voids. By mapping these vast structures, scientists can trace back the gravitational forces at play in the early universe shedding light on the mysterious dark matter that binds these cosmic entities together. As our instruments become more advanced and our observations more precise, we edge ever closer to unraveling the secrets of the universe's early days. Each discovery, from the faintest radiation to the most distant celestial object, adds another piece to the intricate tapestry of our cosmic history, reinforcing our connection to the ancient universe and our place within its vastness. In the realm of cosmic phenomena, gravitational waves have emerged as an intriguing subject of study. These ripples in space-time, akin to the ripples created when a stone is thrown into a pond, have revolutionized our understanding of some of the universe's most violent and enigmatic events. Albert Einstein first predicted the existence of gravitational waves in 1915 as a part of his groundbreaking theory of general relativity. Simply put, when massive celestial objects like black holes or neutron stars accelerate or collide, they create waves that propagate at the speed of light through the very fabric of space-time itself. However, due to their incredibly faint nature, it took a century after Einstein's prediction for us to detect them directly. In 2015, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, LIGO, made a monumental breakthrough. They observed gravitational waves emanating from the collision of two black holes, approximately 1.3 billion light years away. This detection was not just a testament to human engineering and perseverance, but also opened a completely new window to observe the universe. Instead of just using light, as with telescopes, we now had the capability to listen to the universe's vibrations. With gravitational wave detection, we've gained a powerful tool to study events that were previously hidden from our view. For instance, the merging of neutron stars, which was detected in 2017, not only produced gravitational waves, but also emitted light, radio, and gamma rays. By analyzing both gravitational waves and electromagnetic radiation, scientists gathered invaluable information about these stellar smash-ups, the kind of metals produced in the collision, and more insights into the universe's expansion rate. Further, gravitational waves hold the potential to let us peer even deeper into the universe's history. 
there's a hope, albeit a challenging one, to detect waves from supermassive black hole mergers or even echoes from the Big Bang itself. As technology advances and new observatories join the hunt, the dawn of multi-messenger astronomy where we combine different signals from space will undoubtedly lead to more groundbreaking revelations about the cosmos. Have you ever gazed up at the night sky and wondered just how far your eyes can see? Stars, planets, galaxies, they all seem so close yet are unimaginably distant. Our universe is vast, almost incomprehensibly so, and today, we're going to journey to its very limits, to the edge of the ancient universe. Imagine holding a snow globe. Everything inside it is clear and visible, but what lies beyond the glass sphere remains a mystery. This snow globe analogy offers a simplified perspective of the observable universe. Our cosmic sphere has boundaries not due to any physical barrier, but because of the limits of time and light. As light travels at a fixed speed when we look at distant objects in the universe, we are essentially peering back in time. For instance, if a galaxy is one million light years away, the light we're seeing left that galaxy a million years ago. The universe itself is approximately 13.8 billion years old. But strangely, the observable universe extends about 46.5 billion light years in any direction from us. How is this possible? The answer lies in the expansion of the universe. Since the Big Bang, space has been stretching and growing. So, when we look at those ancient beams of light from the distant past, they've traveled across a universe that has been expanding all the while. It's as if our cosmic snow globe is made of stretchy material, ever expanding, continuously changing the position and distance of the decorations inside. Peeling back the layers of time, we find remnants of the universe's birth, the cosmic microwave background or CMB. But what exactly is this CMB? And why is it so crucial to our understanding of the universe's early moments? Imagine an incredibly hot, dense point where everything that would become our universe was compressed into an infinitesimal space. Then, in a moment of incomprehensible energy and motion, the Big Bang occurred. The universe started expanding rapidly. As it expanded, it cooled down and after about 380,000 years, it reached a temperature where protons and electrons could combine to form neutral hydrogen atoms. This moment is essential because before this, the universe was a hot soup of charged particles, scattering light in every direction, making it opaque. But once these particles combined, the universe became transparent. The light released at this instant is what we now detect as the CMB. This cosmic afterglow is like a snapshot of the baby universe, and it can be found in every direction we look. If we could somehow wear CMB glasses, the sky would glow with a nearly uniform radiation, displaying minor fluctuations. These tiny temperature differences, as minute as one part in 100,000, are vital. They hint at regions of slightly different densities in the early universe, serving as the seeds for the formation of galaxies, stars, and eventually, planets and possibly life. The study of CMB has paved the way for many groundbreaking discoveries. For instance, in the early 1960s, Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson accidentally stumbled upon this cosmic echo while working with a radio telescope, leading to a Nobel Prize and further confirmation of the Big Bang Theory. Venturing closer to the universe's origins, we come across scenes of spectacular cosmic drama the birth of the first galaxies and stars. Picture a vast expanse, much darker and quieter than the universe we know today, interrupted by patches of gas and matter. These patches, born from minute fluctuations in the cosmic microwave background, would become the cradles of the universe's very first celestial entities. But how did these initial stars form? The universe's early makeup consisted largely of hydrogen and helium, with trace amounts of lithium. Over time, the force of gravity pulled these particles together, forming dense pockets. Within these pockets, as particles were compressed tighter and tighter, the pressure and temperature rose. Eventually, these conditions ignited nuclear fusion, giving birth to the first stars. These stars, often called Population 3 stars, were unlike any star we see today. They were colossal, with some estimates suggesting they were hundreds of times the mass of our sun. Such immense sizes meant they burned hot, fast, and with incredible brightness. 
Given their massive sizes and intense energy outputs, these initial stars lived short lives, sometimes only a few million years, a blink in cosmic terms. Their deaths were often cataclysmic events, giving rise to massive supernova. These explosions spewed heavier elements into space, elements beyond just hydrogen, helium, and lithium. This stellar material would be essential for the birth of future stars, planets, and even life. In tandem with the first stars, the earliest galaxies began to form. These weren't like the spiraled or elliptical galaxies we're familiar with. They were smaller, irregular, and chaotic. Over time, as stars formed and died, these early galaxies collided and merged, giving rise to larger and more structured galaxies, eventually leading to the majestic cosmic cities we observe today. As our cosmic journey progresses, we encounter a vast, intricate network stretching across the universe, the cosmic web. This immense structure, a combination of galaxies and the elusive dark matter, plays a pivotal role in the universe's large-scale architecture. But what is dark matter? Despite making up about 27% of the universe, it remains one of the biggest mysteries in cosmology. We can't see or detect dark matter directly. It doesn't emit, absorb, or reflect light. Yet we know it exists because of the gravitational effects it exerts on visible matter. When we look at galaxies and their rotations or study the movements of galaxies within galaxy clusters, the gravitational forces at play suggest there's more mass than what's visible to us. This unseen mass is attributed to dark matter. The cosmic web is like a gigantic spider web with strands of dark matter and galaxies intertwined. The intersections of this web are where galaxy clusters reside, and the voids between the strands are vast, almost empty spaces. This web dictates the movement and formation of galaxies. It's like a cosmic dance, where galaxies, under the influence of dark matter's gravitational pull, glide gracefully across vast distances. Interestingly, the patterns and structures we see in the cosmic web offer clues about the universe's initial moments and its subsequent evolution. When researchers map the cosmic web, they are essentially tracing back the steps of the universe, from its earliest fluctuations to the magnificent cosmic tapestry we see today. Embarking further into our cosmic odyssey, we confront an intriguing phenomenon. The universe is not just expanding, it's expanding at an accelerating rate. This realization has transformed our understanding of the universe and introduced fresh questions about its fate. In the early 20th century, Edwin Hubble made a groundbreaking observation. Galaxies were moving away from us, and the farther a galaxy was, the faster it was receding. This was evidence of an expanding universe. The spaces between galaxies were growing, just like the spaces between raisins in a rising loaf of bread. For decades, scientists assumed that the rate of this expansion was slowing down due to the gravitational forces of all the matter in the universe. But in the late 1990s, something astonishing was observed. Distant supernovae, colossal exploding stars that can be used as cosmic distance markers, were revealing that the universe's expansion wasn't decelerating but rather accelerating. What could cause such an acceleration? Enter dark energy. Just as dark matter influences the motion of galaxies, dark energy seems to play a key role in the universe's expansion. Comprising a staggering 68% of the universe, dark energy remains largely enigmatic. One leading idea is the cosmological constant introduced by Albert Einstein, representing energy intrinsic to space itself. As more space comes into existence with the universe's expansion, more of this energy type gets added, leading to an ever-accelerating expansion. But where does this expansion lead? Will galaxies eventually move apart so quickly that they'll be unreachable, making the night sky dark and devoid of distant stars? Or is there a limit to this acceleration? The answers to these questions lie in studying dark energy further and understanding its exact nature and properties. Every exploration, no matter how extensive, encounters boundaries. In our cosmic journey, these boundaries aren't just physical, but also lie within the realms of our perception and comprehension. Just think of it. When we gaze into the vastness of space, we're essentially looking back in time. The light from a star that's 20 million light years away is sharing a story from 20 million years ago. But is what we see the full story? 
There are inherent challenges. The universe is vast, and while our tools and techniques are powerful, they can only capture so much. Some events or entities might remain forever hidden from our view, either because their signals are too weak, or they are masked by other, more dominant cosmic phenomena. For instance, there's a limit to how far back we can see. The cosmic microwave background radiation, a snapshot of the universe when it was just 380,000 years old, is our current wall. Anything beyond that remains shrouded in what's termed the cosmic dark ages. Moreover, our understanding is based on a set of physical laws observed on Earth. But can we be certain these laws are universal, especially under conditions extremely different from our planet? Quantum mechanics and general relativity, two of the most successful theories in physics, describe the universe in fundamentally different ways. Their reconciliation, potentially through a theory of quantum gravity, remains one of the grand challenges of modern physics. Additionally, cognitive biases shape our understanding. We are products of evolution on a specific planet in a specific galaxy. Our senses, our intuitions, and even our best scientific instruments are tailored for survival on Earth, not necessarily for decoding the vast, intricate, and often counterintuitive tapestry of the cosmos. Yet these limitations don't belittle our quest. Instead, they emphasize the beauty and significance of the journey, of continuously pushing the boundaries of knowledge and reaching for the stars, both literally and metaphorically. Ever gaze up at the stars and think just what is out there? The vastness of space has always held mysteries that, despite our best efforts, continue to elude our understanding. Let's journey through some of the universe's most confounding, unexplained mysteries. The Boots Void, often referred to as the Great Nothing, stands as one of the largest and most mysterious voids in the universe. This immense expanse is situated in the Boots constellation, giving it its evocative name. While the scale of celestial objects can often be hard to grasp, the sheer size of this void is genuinely staggering. With a diameter of approximately 330 million light years, the Boots Void's vastness is unparalleled. To help put this into perspective, you could fit our Milky Way galaxy into this space around 2,000 times. Even in the grand tapestry of the universe, where colossal galaxies and nebulae are commonplace, the Boots Void is an anomaly due to its sheer emptiness. When astronomers look at the universe, they generally see a web-like structure, where galaxies are linked in intricate patterns with vast spaces in between known as voids. These voids are not completely empty. Typically, they contain a few galaxies scattered within their bounds. However, what makes the Boots Void peculiar is the extreme scarcity of galaxies inside it. Considering its massive size, scientists would expect to find at least a few thousand galaxies within this region. Instead, to their astonishment, only about 60 galaxies have been detected so far. This means that less than 0.1% of the Boots Void's volume contains galaxies. The reason for such a sparse distribution is a question that has left many astronomers scratching their heads. While voids are formed as a result of the gravitational forces of matter pulling everything into dense regions, the Booty's Void's barrenness doesn't fit typical models. Some theories speculate that the void is simply a massive region where conditions were never conducive to galaxy formation. Others propose that it might be the result of a significant cosmic event or anomaly that we have yet to understand. The discovery of the Boots Void was relatively recent in astronomical terms. Robert Kirshner and his team of astronomers first identified it in the mid-1980s. Using redshift surveys to study galactic distributions, they were taken aback when they encountered a region with a startling absence of galaxies. The vastness and emptiness of the Boots Void were so unexpected that the findings prompted multiple surveys to confirm its existence. The Boots Void's existence challenges our understanding of the universe's structure. Its sparse galaxy distribution and enormous size continue to be subjects of investigation and fascination for astronomers. Every new piece of data regarding this cosmic mystery pushes us to refine our models of the universe's evolution and structure, reminding us that the cosmos still holds many secrets waiting to be unveiled. Galaxies are mesmerizing structures, often likened to grand cosmic whirlpools, teeming with billions of stars, gas and dust. They dance to the rhythm of the universal forces at play. One would expect that the stars on the outskirts of a galaxy would orbit the galactic center more slowly than those closer in, much like the planets in our solar system. 
The inner planets like Mercury and Venus orbit the Sun faster than the outer ones, such as Neptune. This expected behavior is rooted in the laws of classical mechanics. However, the reality of galaxies presents a mystery that has puzzled astronomers for decades, the galaxy rotation problem. When astronomers began to measure the rotation curves of galaxies, they found something entirely unexpected. Using advanced techniques like Doppler shift observations, they found that stars situated in the outer regions of galaxies were moving at similar speeds to those near the center. Instead of rotation curves tapering off in the outer reaches, they remained surprisingly flat. This meant that stars on the periphery of galaxies were moving much faster than traditional physics would predict. So what could be causing these stars to defy expectations? The first indication of this problem emerged in the late 1970s when Vera Rubin, an astrophysicist, observed the rotation curves of spiral galaxies. Her observations showed that the speed of star rotations remained almost constant across galaxies. This was baffling because according to the known laws of gravity and the observable matter within these galaxies, such rotation shouldn't be possible. One leading solution to the galaxy rotation problem has been the hypothesis of dark matter. While it sounds like something out of a science fiction novel, dark matter is a form of matter that doesn't emit, reflect or absorb light. It doesn't interact with electromagnetic forces which means it doesn't produce electromagnetic radiation and as a result remains invisible. However, it does exert gravitational forces, and it's these forces that might be influencing the unexpected rotation curves. The idea is that a halo of this invisible dark matter surrounds galaxies, providing the extra gravitational pull required to keep the stars at the outskirts moving at the speeds they do. In fact, if the existence of dark matter were confirmed, it would account for approximately 85% of the total matter in the universe, making the cosmos as we know it the proverbial tip of the iceberg. Several experiments and observations have been set up globally to detect dark matter, either directly or indirectly. From deep underground labs trying to detect the elusive particles that dark matter might be made of, to powerful telescopes mapping the gravitational effects on light from distant galaxies, the hunt for dark matter is on. The galaxy rotation problem serves as a striking example of how the universe often throws curveballs our way, challenging our understanding and pushing us to seek answers beyond conventional knowledge. Whether the solution lies in dark matter or another, yet undiscovered phenomenon, this cosmic riddle remains one of the most tantalizing in the realm of astrophysics. In the grand tapestry of the cosmos among stars, galaxies and vast voids, there exists an intriguing anomaly that has left astronomers both curious and confounded, the Great Attractor. This entity, a region in space, exerts an immense gravitational force, tugging on not just our Milky Way but also numerous other galaxies. But what makes it so compelling is the fact that its true nature remains largely unknown, concealed behind the expansive region known as the Zone of Avoidance. The discovery of the Great Attractor came about through observations of cosmic flow patterns, when astronomers studied the movement of galaxies, they expected a somewhat random distribution due to the expansion of the universe. Instead, they found a peculiar pattern. Many galaxies, including our very own Milky Way, were drifting in a specific direction at an abnormal speed, roughly 600 kilometers per second. This drift wasn't just a gentle cosmic dance. It was as if an unseen force was pulling these galaxies toward a specific point in space. Situated about 220 million light-years away from us, in the direction of the constellation Centaurus and Hydra, the Great Attractor is neither a single entity nor a particular point in space. Instead, it's a region packed with galaxies forming a massive gravitational center. Given the vast distances and scale involved, pinpointing its exact nature is challenging. But one thing is clear, its gravitational influence is equivalent to a mass of tens of thousands of Milky Ways. What adds to the allure of the Great Attractor is its location behind the aforementioned zone of avoidance. This zone is filled with dense cosmic dust and gas, making it extremely hard for telescopes to peer through, thus masking a significant portion of the observable universe from our view. So while we can gauge the effects of the Great Attractor's gravitational pull, gaining a clear visual on what lies behind that dusty curtain has been a challenge. Using radio telescopes and X-ray observatories, scientists have managed to pierce through some of this obscurity. They've identified several clusters of galaxies in that region, 
including the Norma Cluster, which is one of the most massive galaxy clusters known. Could the cumulative gravitational force of these clusters account for the pull we've labelled as the Great Attractor? As technology and observational methods improve, we're slowly gathering more pieces of this vast cosmic puzzle. The Large Synoptic Survey Telescope, for instance, promises future revelations about this area. For now, the Great Attractor serves as a testament to the universe's endless mysteries, reminding us that for every question we answer, countless others wait to be explored. When one pictures the universe, the imagery might be that of a vast, unending expanse dotted with stars, planets, galaxies and cosmic phenomena. But behind this imagery lies a more intricate question about the very shape and geometry of our universe. Astronomers and cosmologists have wrestled with this question for decades. What is the shape of the universe? And intriguingly, most evidence points to the conclusion that the universe is flat. First and foremost, what does a flat universe even mean? It doesn't imply that the universe is a two-dimensional sheet. Instead, flat in this context refers to the geometry of space itself. In a flat universe, the rules of Euclidean geometry hold true on the largest cosmic scales. That means parallel lines will never meet. The interior angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees and so on. One of the primary ways scientists have come to this flat universe conclusion is through the study of the cosmic microwave background radiation. The CMB is the afterglow of the Big Bang, a faint whisper of radiation that fills the universe. By studying the patterns within this radiation, scientists can infer the geometry of the universe. One of the key observations is the size of certain patterns or spots in the CMB. If the universe were curved like a sphere, these spots would appear larger and if it were saddle-shaped, they'd appear smaller. Yet observations from satellites like the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe and the Planck Satellite have shown that these spots are just the size expected for a flat universe. Another compelling piece of evidence for a flat universe comes from the study of large cosmic structures like clusters of galaxies. Their distribution and the manner in which they bend light, gravitational lensing, are consistent with a universe where space is flat and not curved. But why should the universe be flat? The inflationary theory of the early universe provides a possible answer. According to this theory, in the first fleeting moments after the Big Bang, the universe underwent an incredibly rapid expansion faster than the speed of light. This expansion stretched out any initial curvature the universe might have had, leading to a cosmos that appears flat across even the largest distances we can observe. It's worth noting that when we say the universe is flat, we're referring to the observable universe the part of the cosmos we can currently see. What lies beyond that, or whether the universe might curve on scales even grander than we can currently fathom, remains one of the big open questions in cosmology. In essence, the concept of a flat universe challenges our everyday understanding and introduces a fascinating perspective on the vastness of the cosmos. While our observations currently support the idea of flatness, the universe has always been full of surprises, emphasizing the dynamic and ever-evolving nature of our understanding of the cosmos. Where is here? Imagine if here was not Earth, but Europa, Jupiter's icy moon. But why Europa? And what challenges and wonders would humans face if they set up camp on this distant world? The allure of Europa Europa, the sixth closest moon of Jupiter, has always intrigued scientists. Not just because of its ice-covered surface, but because beneath that icy shell, a vast ocean is believed to exist. This ocean might contain more than twice the water volume of all of Earth's oceans combined. But what's even more fascinating is the possibility that this ocean might just harbor life and where there's water, human imagination and ambition flow. Europa is not just a cold place, it's exceptionally frigid with average surface temperatures plunging to about minus 160 degrees Celsius it's far colder than the chilliest places on Earth. Imagine the coldest day you've ever experienced and then magnify that sensation many times over. Such temperatures would make any direct human activity on the surface nearly impossible. The tools would freeze, machinery would malfunction, and human life would be at severe risk. But the cold isn't the only challenge. The surface of Europa is encased in an ice shell, which could be between 15 to 25 kilometers thick. 
Breaking through this formidable icy barrier to access the underlying ocean, or even just to set up a base, would require advanced drilling techniques and equipment resilient enough to withstand the cold. Then there's the issue of radiation. Jupiter possesses a powerful magnetic field, which bathes Europa in high levels of radiation. This radiation is much more intense than what we're used to on Earth and poses a serious health risk to any potential human settlers. Long-term exposure can lead to severe health complications, including an increased risk of cancer. Therefore, any habitats on Europa would need to be shielded effectively from this radiation. The thick ice layer, though a challenge for access, could be a potential shield against this radiation, making subterranean habitats more feasible. Europa's atmosphere is also significantly different from Earth's. Primarily composed of oxygen, it's extremely tenuous. This means that it's far too thin to support human life as we know it. Settlers on Europa wouldn't be able to step outside without a spacesuit, and habitats would need to be completely sealed and possess their own life support systems to provide breathable air. Europa's gravitational force is only about 13% of Earth's. While it may sound fun to bounce around in low gravity, the long-term effects on the human body are not fully understood. Prolonged exposure to low gravity conditions, as observed in astronauts, can lead to muscle atrophy, bone density loss and other health concerns. Thus, innovative solutions would be necessary to help humans maintain physical health. Finally, for all of Europa's abundant ice and potential water, many other essential resources would be scarce. Vital elements and minerals needed to sustain human life and technology might be missing or hard to extract. Reliable food sources would also be a significant challenge. Settlers would likely need to rely on shipments from Earth or develop advanced hydroponic and aeroponic systems to grow food underground. Imagine an endless expanse of water, stretching as far as the eye can see, hidden beneath layers of ice. This isn't a scene from a science fiction novel, but a reality on Europa. This moon of Jupiter has a subsurface ocean, believed to contain more than double the volume of all of Earth's water combined. And where there's water, there's potential energy. Europa is in a gravitational dance with Jupiter, a massive planet with an exceptionally strong pull. As the moon orbits, Jupiter's gravitational tug warps and stretches it, generating heat through tidal forces. This heat ensures that Europa's underground ocean remains liquid and doesn't freeze solid, but it also presents an opportunity. These same tidal forces could potentially be harnessed, transformed into thermal energy, and then further converted into electricity. It would be a continuous source of power much like how we harness tidal energy on Earth, but on a much grander scale. Beyond tidal forces, there is evidence to suggest that Europa may possess underwater volcanic activity. On Earth, underwater volcanoes or hydrothermal vents spew forth immense energy. If such vents exist on Europa, they could potentially serve as an additional energy source, providing heat and possibly driving turbines to generate electricity. Moreover, these hydrothermal vents could create nutrient-rich pockets in the ocean, sparking intriguing conversations about potential life and offering resource opportunities for human settlers. Europa's icy surface is constantly bombarded by solar radiation, a process that splits water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. With the right technology, humans could potentially capture and store these gases. On Earth, hydrogen is already being looked at as a promising clean energy source, and with oxygen present, the necessary ingredients for combustion are readily available. In essence, Europa itself could provide a renewable fuel source, given the right infrastructure. Water, besides being an essential component for life, can be split into hydrogen and oxygen through the process of electrolysis. While this method would require an initial energy input, once an energy infrastructure based on tidal or volcanic sources is established, the vast ocean of Europa could serve as a vast reservoir for producing fuel, power and breathable air. Harnessing energy on Europa offers exciting possibilities, not just for sustaining a potential human colony, but also for understanding and tapping into natural processes that are different, yet eerily familiar to those on Earth. When we talk about oceans on Earth, we imagine vast expanses of salt water teeming with life, stretching from one horizon to the other. Now visualize an ocean entirely concealed beneath an icy shield in perpetual darkness, untouched and unexplored. This is the enigmatic ocean of Europa. Europa's outer shell is a protective layer of ice that varies in thickness but can be several kilometers deep. 
Beneath this icy armor, the vast ocean, possibly containing more than twice the water volume of all of Earth's oceans combined, remains hidden. The challenge would be penetrating this layer, a task that requires innovative technologies and methods to ensure safe passage through the ice and into the waters below. One of the most exciting prospects about Europa's hidden ocean is the possibility of life. On Earth, life has been discovered in the most inhospitable places, from the deep oceanic trenches to acidic lakes. The question arises, could Europa's deep, dark ocean, potentially warmed by thermal vents and rich in minerals, support alien life forms? Discovering even the simplest microorganisms in these waters would revolutionize our understanding of life's tenacity and the potential for existence beyond Earth. It's speculated that over time, the movement of Europa's icy crust may have created a complex network of tunnels, caverns and pockets filled with liquid water. These could serve as oases for life or sheltered habitats. For human explorers, these subglacial pockets could offer access points to the deeper ocean, as well as potential safe havens or bases from which to conduct scientific research. If we were to find signs of life, no matter how primitive, beneath Europa's icy crust, it would raise significant ethical questions. Would we have the right to colonize and utilize resources from a moon that already harbors life? How would such a discovery reshape our cultural, philosophical and religious narratives about our place in the universe? Europa's mysterious hidden depths beckon us with both challenges and promises. As we gaze upon its cracked, icy surface from afar, it's almost as if the moon is inviting us to uncover its age-old secrets, waiting patiently for someone or something to listen to its story. The idea of humans setting foot on a distant moon around Jupiter would be, in itself, a monumental event in our shared history. Imagine then what would happen if life were discovered beneath the thick ice of Europa. It wouldn't just be a scientific breakthrough, it would be a cultural and psychological game-changer. Living on Europa would mean adjusting to an environment vastly different from Earth. The constant darkness, the isolation from other human settlements, and the potentially claustrophobic nature of life beneath the ice could have significant psychological impacts on colonists. Addressing mental well-being would be as crucial as ensuring physical health in this extreme environment. With advancements in technology, the initial bases on Europa could expand into bustling colonies, with entire ecosystems being built beneath the ice. Advanced drilling and construction techniques might enable habitats to be developed closer to the moon's subsurface ocean, allowing for easier exploration and resource utilization. Europa's vast ocean might not just harbor life, it could also be a treasure trove of resources. The extraction of minerals, gases, and possibly even new, previously unknown materials from the ocean and the ice could support the moon's economy and even be exported back to Earth or other space colonies. The challenges of living on Europa would drive rapid advancements in technology. From advanced drilling machinery to submersible exploration vehicles and life support systems, the technological innovations from a Europa colony could benefit other space missions and applications on Earth. As the colony on Europa grows and establishes itself, it could play a pivotal role in the broader human expansion into the solar system. Being a midpoint between the inner and outer solar system, Europa could become a hub for trade, research and exploration, bridging the gap between planets and fostering interplanetary cooperation. The future on Europa holds infinite possibilities, painting a picture of humanity not just as residents of Earth, but as true citizens of the cosmos. Venus, often dubbed Earth's sister planet because of its similar size and proximity to us, has always been somewhat overshadowed by our red neighbor Mars in the quest for extraterrestrial life. However, a recent discovery has cast a surprisingly bright spotlight onto this scorching cloud-covered world. For the longest time, Venus was dismissed as a possible haven for life, with surface temperatures hot enough to melt lead and an atmosphere thick with carbon dioxide and clouds of sulfuric acid, it seemed an unlikely place to find any signs of life. But the universe, as it often does, threw a curveball at us. In 2020, scientists made an announcement that caused quite a stir in the astronomical community. They had detected traces of a gas called phosphine in the clouds of Venus. Now, why was this discovery so groundbreaking? Phosphine is a molecule made up of phosphorus and hydrogen. On Earth, this gas is primarily associated with life, 
produced by bacteria living in oxygen-free environments. The clouds of Venus, where the phosphine was detected, have temperatures and pressures that are somewhat Earth-like compared to the planet's inhospitable surface. This led to the tantalizing possibility. Could there be life floating in the Venusian atmosphere? Before jumping to conclusions, researchers meticulously looked for other explanations. Volcanic activity, lightning, and even meteor impacts were considered as potential sources of the phosphine. Yet, none of these scenarios could produce the amount of phosphine that was observed. The instruments and methods used to detect the phosphine underwent rigorous scrutiny, with teams double-checking data and ensuring the signal was genuine. The presence of phosphine doesn't confirm life on Venus, but it does open the door to this exciting possibility. To find more answers, missions to Venus are now being considered with renewed interest. By sending probes to study its atmosphere directly or even to float in the clouds, Scientists hope to determine the origin of the phosphine and see if the thick, acidic clouds of our neighboring planet might indeed harbor some form of life. In the grand tapestry of space exploration, the phosphine discovery on Venus reminds us of an essential lesson. Sometimes the search for alien life may lead us in directions we never anticipated. Mars, our captivating neighbor, has always been at the center of mankind's fascination when pondering the existence of extraterrestrial life. With its haunting red landscapes and vast valleys, it's a planet that has inspired countless tales of Martians and space invasions. But recently, some real, tangible clues have emerged from this distant world that could hint at the existence of ancient life. The term organic might conjure up images of green foods or farming practices, but in the realm of chemistry, it simply refers to carbon-based molecules, which are life's building blocks. Such molecules are crucial because all known life forms on Earth are carbon-based. In 2018, the scientific community was abuzz with excitement when the Curiosity rover, NASA's mobile laboratory rolling across Mars, discovered organic molecules preserved in Martian rocks. These rocks, located in an area named Gale Crater, are estimated to be about 3.5 billion years old. This discovery means that at around the same time life was gaining a foothold on Earth, Mars had the ingredients necessary for life. What makes Gale Crater especially interesting is that it's believed to have once contained a lake. With the discovery of these organic molecules, one can't help but imagine a past Mars where water-filled lakes or oceans nurtured early forms of life. However, it's important to note that the presence of organic molecules doesn't directly point to life. Mars is a dynamic planet with a history of volcanic activity. These organic molecules could have been formed by non-biological processes or even delivered from outer space via meteorites. Despite the uncertainty, this discovery adds another layer to Mars's already complex and intriguing story. Scientists, with the help of rovers like Curiosity and Future Missions, continue to unravel the mysteries of the Red Planet. Each discovery, each hint of ancient water or molecule, draws us closer to answering that age-old question. Are we alone in the universe? For now, the presence of organic molecules on Mars stands as a testament to the planet's potential to have supported life. As we dive deeper into its secrets, who knows what other revelations await us? Far from the warmth of the sun in the chilling depths of our solar system lie two icy moons that, contrary to their frigid exteriors, might harbor the warmth of life deep within. Enceladus, a glistening moon of Saturn, and Europa, one of Jupiter's largest moons, are more than just frozen celestial bodies. They are worlds of intrigue and promise. At first glance, Enceladus might appear as just another ice-covered sphere, but it hides a dynamic secret beneath its surface. In 2005, the Cassini spacecraft, while exploring Saturn and its moons, witnessed stunning plumes of water vapor and ice particles erupting from the south pole of Enceladus. These geyser-like jets bursting forth into space indicated that beneath its icy shell, Enceladus might be hiding a vast subsurface ocean. Europa, with its cracked, ice-covered surface, tells a similar tale. Observations from various missions and telescopes have provided strong evidence that a massive subsurface ocean, potentially twice the volume of Earth's oceans, exists beneath Europa's icy crust. These observations, coupled with the Moon's induced magnetic field, suggest the presence of a salty, liquid water ocean. But why is the discovery of these oceans significant? Water, as we understand it, is a fundamental ingredient for life. 
On Earth, where there's water, there's often life. These hidden oceans on Enceladus and Europa offer the tantalizing possibility that, in their warm depths, microbial life or even more complex organisms could exist. It's incredible to imagine that in such extreme and distant environments, life might find a way. The potential existence of hydrothermal vents on the ocean floors of these moons further amplifies this possibility. On Earth, hydrothermal vents in our ocean's abyssal depths teem with life. These ecosystems thrive without sunlight, relying instead on the chemicals spewed out by the vents for energy. Could similar vents in the oceans of Enceladus or Europa be home to alien life forms? As technology advances, our gaze turns not just to the distant stars, but also to these icy worlds in our backyard. Future missions to these moons aim to study their oceans more closely, hunting for signs of life or the conditions that might support it. The discovery of these subsurface oceans has reshaped our understanding of where life might exist beyond Earth. It's a compelling reminder that sometimes the most exciting mysteries and potentials for discovery lie just beneath the surface. The TRAPPIST-1 system discovered in 2017 was a breakthrough in our quest to understand the universe and the possibility of life beyond Earth. Situated just 40 light years away from us, it's relatively close in astronomical terms. When you think of the vastness of space, 40 light years might seem enormous. But in the grand scale of the universe, this system is practically our neighbor. What makes TRAPPIST-1 truly special is the sheer number of Earth-sized planets it contains. Seven to be exact, these planets are not just any regular planets. They are remarkably similar in size to our own home Earth. This resemblance in size leads scientists to believe that these planets could potentially have similar conditions to Earth, which opens up the possibilities of them hosting life. The most intriguing aspect of these seven siblings is that three of them are comfortably nestled in what's known as the star's habitable zone. This is a region around a star where the conditions might just be right to support liquid water on the planet's surface. As we know, water is essential for life, at least life as we understand it. If there's liquid water, there might be an environment conducive to life. Furthermore, the star at the center of the TRAPPIST-1 system is a red dwarf. These types of stars are cooler and less luminous than our sun. Because of this, the habitable zone where temperatures could allow for liquid water is closer to the star. This means that the planets in this zone, with their potential watery reservoirs, are in close proximity to their parent star, making them tantalizing targets for future observations. There's a significant effort in the scientific community to study these planets in detail. Using advanced telescopes and observational techniques, researchers hope to decipher the atmospheres of these planets. If they can determine the composition of these atmospheres, they could look for signs of life, or at least conditions favorable for life. The TRAPPIST-1 system, with its Earth-like planets and potential for water, remains a beacon of hope in the search for extraterrestrial life. Deep in the cosmos, in the vast expanse of our universe, there lies a phenomenon that has both baffled and excited astronomers for years. Fast radio bursts, commonly abbreviated as FRBs. First discovered in 2007, these are intense, millisecond-long spikes of radio energy that seem to come from very, very far away and their origins remain one of the most captivating puzzles in modern astronomy. Imagine for a moment a lighthouse. It sends out a quick powerful beam of light that sweeps across the landscape and then disappears, only to repeat again after a while. FRBs are somewhat similar in nature. They are these extremely short-lived yet incredibly powerful bursts of radio waves that, when first detected, left many experts scratching their heads. The distance from which these FRBs are coming from is astounding. Through various observations and calculations, scientists have determined that many of these signals are originating from galaxies millions to billions of light years away. To put that into perspective, even the light from our closest neighboring galaxy, Andromeda, takes about 2.5 million years to reach us. That these brief signals from far-off galaxies manage to reach us is a testament to their immense energy and power. But what causes FRBs? That's where the plot thickens. There have been numerous theories. Some suggest that these could be the byproducts of massive cosmic events, like the collision of neutron stars or the eruption of supermassive black holes. Others even proposed more exotic theories, like signals sent by advanced alien civilizations trying to reach out to the cosmos. 
While the extraterrestrial hypothesis is undeniably thrilling, researchers tend to look for more conventional, natural explanations first. In recent times, some breakthroughs have been made. For instance, certain FRBs have been observed to repeat coming from the same location in the sky. This repeater behavior might provide clues about their origins. Are they from neutron stars in the throes of death? Or are they the result of some other high-energy astrophysical process? The hunt to uncover the mysteries of FRBs is ongoing, with newer telescopes and technologies paving the way for deeper insights. These enigmatic signals from the cosmos might not only teach us about the vast, intricate workings of the universe, but could also offer hints, no matter how subtle, about the possibility of life beyond our tiny blue planet.